Welcome back, Controls Champions, to another installation of Breen Machine Video Blog. I'm your host, John Breen, and I've got a ton of stuff I want to share with you with Industrial Vision, but before we do that, we've got to get connected. Let's get to it. Okay, I'm going to show you the camera setup that I have. Today we're going to be talking about how to connect to a Cognix camera, and that means, you know, how do you set up the power, how do you connect it to your computer, get the software, all of that. Let's get started just pointing out the physical devices that I have. Here I obviously have a camera. This is the same Cognix camera that I talked about in the last video. It's an Insight 7802 and it's kind of an all-in-one unit. It's got the brains inside of here, so that's what we program. It's got a built-in autofocus lens with a light on it. This is a red ring light. One clue that this is a smart camera is just that it's got all these light indicators on it. The way we've got this plugged in, and this is very typical of cameras, smart cameras in the industry, is we've got one cable is Ethernet, and the other cable is power and discrete I.O. So that could be pass-fail signals, that could be a trigger from a machine. All of that stuff is in this cable. Now, in this case, we're only using that power and I.O. cable for power. So if I look right here, I just got a red and black wire connected to a power supply and the rest are just tied back on the sample unit. And something that I think is really good to know if, if you're ever gonna do a benchtop thing like this just to test something or do a little development. In a real machine, you know, we would buy a proper 24 volt power supply, it'd be DIN rail mounted and, and industrially rugged. For the bench here, you know, it's not nearly as important. It doesn't, doesn't have to be that rugged. So cost is often more of a consideration. So this is a great example. I'm just using an old laptop power supply. It's 18 and a half volts and three and a half amps, which ends up being just fine for this camera. So obviously check that when you're setting something like this up, but that's a nice inexpensive solution. I also want to talk about this ethernet cable specifically. This is an industrial ethernet cable. So it comes with this round end instead of just the RJ45 end that you're used to seeing in office environments or on your laptop. Uh, but beyond that, this is also an industrial rugged cable. And you might not just know it by looking at it, but here on the end, you can actually see some of the shielding that they have in here. This is more shielded and more robust than what you would normally see in an office environment. Another good thing to point out, just to pay attention to, I've got an example of a right angle connector here and a straight connector. And depending on where you mount this on your machine, uh, you'll probably have a preference for one over the other. So just be aware that that exists. Okay, so I plugged that back in. It's plugged into my docking station, and that'll be important in a minute when we start to pay attention to connecting. So, let's talk about software. If I go to the Cognex website, and I go to Support Software and Firmware, we're looking for Cognex Insight Explorer. And if I scroll down here, there it is, 5.80 is the latest and that's what I've got installed right now. So you can install this for free. I think you just gotta, uh, you know, give them your name and email address or something like that. This is what the software looks like. And you'll notice I've got a lot of these things in the menus are available. When you first install this, you're not gonna see all these things available until you get connected to a camera. And the difference is I have an emulation license key installed. So I'm just gonna quick show you where that is. If you go to system options and click on emulation, yours is gonna look something like this. You'll have a different offline programming reference than I do. It's, it's a way of making sure that they've got a unique count. They, they wanna know how many machines this is being installed and used on. So you go to their website and enter that in and they will give you another number like this and then you hit okay or apply or whatever and then you'll be able to run offline. We'll talk more about emulation in a different video. I just wanted you to know why mine might look a little different than yours. And the website that I was talking about for the key generator, you can just 
go to Google and search for Insight Key Generator, and this is what you're gonna find. They ask for your company name and that offline programming reference. That was that number that I showed you. Click on Get Key and you'll get that other number to enter into that second field. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about actually getting connected. Now this is plugged into my docking station. That's this thing here. So I'm just gonna show you what I have for an IP address. Cause this is gonna end up being important. So 192.168.1, that's very typical for the first three numbers. And then these are also important, the 255, 255, 255. In this case, this is, this is the unique identifier for my docking station and if we have other things on the network, they might be you know, 200, 201, uh, it could be zero or one or whatever. We just have to make sure we pick a different last number and the rest have to be the same. So I'm just gonna close that, get it out of our way. And the place that we find that for, for the camera that we're connecting to is by clicking on add right here. And When I do that, notice it just finds right away that there's a camera out there. Note that this IP address, and we've even got a blinky uh, red exclamation part here that's telling us this one's not compatible. Remember I had a one here on my laptop, on my docking station, and we have a zero on the camera. And that's why we don't see it populated here. We can't program it right now. Sometimes you'll see this default to zero or whatever, and then that also ends up being unusual and you get that red blinky. We can just copy this straight from our PC so that we know everything's compatible and change this last number to whatever we want. I'll just say 10, but it, uh, you know, that's specific to your application. Just make sure it's unique. So I'll click on apply and it's gonna say it's gonna disconnect and reconnect. We'll say okay. Change successfully. It's gonna restart, cool. Notice it did actually populate here already, so that's a good sign. I'm gonna say okay and let it restart. And it's, uh, don't worry about this, it's just saying it can't find devices that aren't already connected. This one's already connected, or we're already aware of it, though it's still restarting. So I'll click okay and close. And then we'll just wait for a second while the camera restarts itself. Okay, there it goes. We're connected. Let's just prove I'm not gonna go through setting up the image and everything right now, but I'm just gonna prove that look, see, it is connected. I can wave my hand in front of it. I can put some coins there and you can see those. They don't look great, but that's the next video. We're gonna talk about that shortly. So, hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. I do wanna hear what you guys have to say. Do you have questions? Do you like it? It makes me feel happy to see comments, so please do that. And we'll see you next time.